Hi, today we'll talk about a weighing scale and understand how a weighing scale works. And uh, just by this simple experiment of a weighing scale, we can understand uh, what is the difference between a potentiometer and a voltmeter. Both these devices, they can measure uh, voltage, but uh, what is the difference between them? So suppose I have a bag of mangoes with me and I want to measure what is the mass of the bag of mangoes. So uh, what is the procedure to use a weighing scale is uh, we would uh, take our uh, mass which we want to measure in this case my mangoes. So I put them on uh, on the right hand side uh, the right hand pan of the weighing scale and then on the left hand side here we can put some reference mass. So what does what do you mean by a reference mass it is those uh, pentagon uh, iron blocks uh, that are usually used right so and you you know they have the mass printed on uh, you know it's kind of engraved on the blocks right so when you put the blocks one at a time one above the other then uh, you can just count and add up how much uh, mass is there and then uh, once your beam is balanced right it's not tilting to the left or the right once it is balanced horizontal then you can say that the masses on both the sides have become equal now uh, this is the standard procedure but suppose um, say there is a scenario in which uh, the mass of the mangoes is too it's too heavy so i have uh, uh, the reference mass here it's not enough right to uh, equate with the mass of the mangoes so would that be okay if i pick out one mango from here from the right hand side and i put one of the mangoes on the left hand side so that the beam becomes balanced so if i put one mango here is that okay so obviously the answer is uh, no that's not the way to use this machine right whatever mass you are trying to measure don't touch that mass this is not allowed right we can't do this and right? you should not pick out the mango and put it on uh, the reference mass side why because uh, now if you say it is equal and if you simply count these one two three blocks and I anyways don't know the mass of this one green mango so then uh, uh, I, I, I will get the wrong answer right this is not the way to do it so what is a potentiometer uh, doing compared to a voltmeter right so what is a voltmeter voltmeter is a device which can measure voltage right it's a standard block uh, you must have used in your college practicals right a black box with two terminals and uh, you can measure the voltage if you connect it across any resistor or any any cell so similarly here say i have a voltmeter v i have a cell and uh, say i want to measure the emf of the cell so what does it mean by emf emf stands for right electromotive force what does it mean it's a it's not a force right we can say it's actually a it's not measured in newtons or dynes it is measured in volts right so what voltage is this emf it is what is printed on the label of the cell for example if i take a standard duracell d size say then it's going to be 1.5 volts right so emf is the voltage printed on the label of the cell so you may ask then why do i need to measure it well uh, one case you want to uh, check is it really 1.5 volts or in the case of the manufacturer uh, he definitely the manufacturer definitely wants to know what is the emf so that he can print it on the label or he wants to check whether the manufactured cell is in uh, you know congruence with the specifications so see i connect a voltmeter so is this okay so comparing it with the weighing scale would my voltmeter measure the emf the answer is no why because what the voltmeter is doing is voltmeter if you see the video related to conversion of galvanometer to voltmeter 
will understand that the voltmeter is nothing but a galvanometer and in a galvanometer if the pointer is deflecting the reason is because of current flowing through it that means there is current flowing through the voltmeter and that's why the pointer is moving so where is this current coming from answer is the current is coming from the cell the same cell whose emf i'm trying to measure so comparing to the case of the mangoes right i can now compare my emf this voltage this cells energy or voltage i can compare it with the mango this is my mango and uh, this is the machine this voltmeter is the machine which i can compare with my weighing scale and this machine is trying to measure my mango how much mango i have but in the process what is the machine doing the machine is extracting out some energy some current right it is extracting energy out from my mango it's like as good as taking one mango from the right hand side and putting it on the left hand side right so that's not allowed or in other words what reading the voltmeter is showing the voltage which the voltmeter is showing is hence not the emf right it is actually potential difference or what we call in short as pd right so voltmeter device cannot measure emf of a cell it can only measure pd or it can measure potential difference across a resistor or a cell it is unable to measure emf why because it's like taking a mango out of my bag of mango right so hence we have a need for this device which we call as a potentiometer right so this potentiometer is a device which can not only measure pd just like what a voltmeter does but it can even measure emf right it can measure emf of the cell which the voltmeter is not able to do so let's understand that uh, how does it work so again our comparison with the weighing scale is going to help us so first of all i have a long wire which is usually 2 to 10 meters this is what we call as the potentiometer wire we can call it as ab this potentiometer wire ab is not made up of copper okay <clears throat> it's going to be a high resistance wire now there is a cell or rather i can draw a battery uh, why this has to be a battery and not a cell there is a uh, error and uh, corresponding to the error there is one precaution because of which we have to keep a battery here it is to indicate that this voltage is high okay uh, that we can see at the end why we need a battery here right now we are just trying to understand how does this potentiometer work so i have a rheostat okay let the rheostat resistance be rh let the internal resistance of this cell or let it be small r ab is my potentiometer wire now first uh a point to be clarified before we move ahead is this is not my bag of mango this emf e is not the cell whose emf i want to measure using this device potentiometer so coming back to our weighing scale if you want to measure the mass of a bag of mangoes then you need some reference mass you need another mass which is used for reference right and uh, what should be the property of the reference first the reference mass available should be more than the bag of mangoes okay so i need to have a large voltage here secondly the reference mass should be variable i should be able to decide how much mass i want right and hence if you see those stack uh of these uh, these blocks which are used 
as a reference mass right you can see a stack of them there will be a 5 kg block a 2 kg block a 1 kg block a 500 gram block and so on right so like that using a combination of these blocks i can uh, i can use any i can measure any kind of mass i can come up with any kind of number here if i want say 650 grams then i can use a 500 gram block a 100 gram block and a 50 gram block so that will give me 650 grams here and then i can measure okay the mango is 650 grams for example right or if i say i want uh, 1.7 kg right then i can take a 1 kg block a 500 gram block and a 200 gram block and that will give me 1.7 kg so similarly here this cell e is going to be our total reference in comparison to the mass it's it, we can say it is uh, the reference mass or in this case the reference voltage right it is this cell e which will give us a voltage across this wire ab and that voltage can be used as our reference voltage okay it is not this emf uh, that we are trying to measure so let's say for example uh, this is a 10 volt cell now these numbers are just for reference okay uh, the actual numbers uh, will vary based on the mcq but we'll we'll just take one example to understand what's happening so there is a 10 volt cell and uh, there is a uh, loss right inside the cell there is a loss so let's assume there is 2 volts loss and a rheostat let's assume there is 2 volts which appears on the rheostat right so what is this cell doing it is passing current through the wire through the rheostat and through the loss into the back into the cell right so we can understand obviously that this small r rh and if i call the resistance of the wire as say rab right we can call the resistance of the wire as rab across the entire wire a and b then uh, what we can understand is this rab small r and rh all three are in series right and this cell e is driving current through this potentiometer circuit right this is the main potentiometer circuit this can be compared to the machine weighing scale now i need a bag of mango and i need the reference mass so the reference mass is the voltage across this wire my bag of mango is yet to come we have not yet shown the bag of mango but uh, this is the main potentiometer circuit here and since the job of this cell is to drive current through this circuit we also call this cell e as the driving cell and uh, since this is not the main cell this is not my mango right the main thing here is not the block of iron the main thing is the block uh, are the mangoes right so that's what is of importance so similarly here this cell is not the main cell the, the cell whose emf i want to measure that's somewhere else that is yet to come so this cell e is also called as the auxiliary cell right it's not the main cell it's the auxiliary cell or i can also call it as the driving cell which is a driving current through the uh, potentiometer wire so if they are in series then i can just uh, consider the case of voltage divider that means the voltage gets divided or in other words from this 10 volts 2 volts plus 2 volts 4 volts have appeared across these two so the remaining 6 volts because the total is 10 volts the remaining 6 volts must have appeared across the wire ab okay now this 6 volt i can compare it to my reference mass that means i cannot measure any emf which is more than 6 volts if the total here i can have combining all the blocks together if suppose i can get uh, let's say 8 kilos example okay i'm just taking an example if all the blocks stacked up one above the other uh, total add up to 8 kilos that means i cannot measure at a in a given right in in one experiment right at a time i cannot measure more than 8 kilos yeah if i have more than 8 kilos i can just split the mangoes in two batches and i can always do that but we can't do that with emf right we can't we can't cut the cell in half and say let's measure you know half of the emf we can't do that so we have to do right the experiment in one shot 
we cannot split the experiment in two parts. So, the EMF, the bag of mango which I should have should be less than 6 volts, right. And that is one of the reasons why, right, why we are putting a cell here, we are putting a battery here, two cells, we are drawing two cells to show that this EMF, the driving cell EMF should be more than what I am trying to measure. My bag of mango is going to come here in the diagram. Okay, now, <clears throat> so before we move ahead, we can understand the working principle of the potentiometer. The working principle of the potentiometer is that voltage is proportional to length. V is proportional to L. Or if I replace the proportional sign with equal to sign, then V is K times L we can say. Or this K is V by L. Right? This K is what we call as potential gradient. Right. Potential gradient means if I draw a graph of voltage versus length, right, voltage on the y axis and uh, length on the x axis, then uh, the slope of it y upon x v by l, right, dy by dx, you can say. The slope of that graph, another name for slope is gradient, right. So the gradient of that graph will give me this k and that is why it is called as potential gradient, right. If I have a graph of v versus l, then the slope of this graph will give me k, right? The slope here is k, m is equal to k. So, anyways, so what is the value of this k in terms of uh, r a b small r r h and e? So, I have six meet six meters of wire here. So, this wire which has been arranged in a zigzag form, right, you can have a scale below. This scale is of 1 meter. So, each run, right, of the wire is 1 meter. So, since I have 6 legs here, I can consider the wire is of 6 meter. So, then if I have 6 meters of length, for example, and 6 volts across it, then what will I get? 6 volts over 6 meters, I will get 1 volt per meter. This is just an example again, right? Actual numbers will vary based on the MCQ. So, if it is 1 volt per meter, right? This is, the, I can use this wire now with 1 volts per meter to, to measure my mango, my EMF of some cell, right? So, say I, I have a cell whose EMF is 2.5 meters or 2.5 volts, right? So, if I have a cell whose EMF is 2.5 volts, what I can do is, if from this wire of 6 meters, if I select 2.5, that means 1, 2 and 0.5 will be somewhere here, somewhere here, right. Then, the voltage across this point, say, if we call this point as P, then the voltage from this point A to point P will be 2.5 volts and that is why I am saying this 6 volt is my reference and from this reference as I said earlier the reference should be flexible. So, from this reference I can extract or just consider 2.5 volts which I need if my EMF is say 2.5 volts, right. So, how is it, uh, so the relation of K coming back to K, how do we get express k in terms of uh, the parameters of the circuit. So, since it is V by L, right, voltage per unit length, what I can do is, I can consider, or uh, let us consider the entire length of the wire and let us call it as LAB, right, the total length of the wire. Most of the times this LAB is given in the MCQs. So, if I consider LAB as the entire length, then I must consider the entire voltage across the wire. Right. So, let us call that as VAB. So, how do I get that VAB? So, that suppose if the current flowing through the circuit is I, then that VAB can be called as I into RAB. This is nothing but Ohm's law. V is equal to IR upon LAB. And then, what can I do with this current I? I know that RAB, RH and small r, they are in series. So, since all three of them are in series, right, I can use Ohm's law and I can say I is equal to 
the cell which is driving the current is E divided by I is equal to voltage upon current is equal to voltage upon resistance. So, the voltage is E, the resistance in series all together is going to be RAB and small r and RH. All are in series and in series I have to add the resistors. Right? So, this E upon RAB plus small r plus RH, this much is the current I. Then multiplied by RAB which is there in the numer numerator and in the denominator I have LAB. Right? So, this is my main formula for potential gradient in a potentiometer and even this one can help us solve MCQs. K is equal to V by L or K is equal to E RAB upon RAB plus small r plus RH into the whole into LAB. These are the two main formulae for potential gradient. Okay. So, now coming to our bag of mangoes which is the main thing because of which we are doing this experiment. So, where is the mango? Where do I put my cell whose EMF I want to measure? That is connected from this point A right here. Let us call it as E1 now which I told you let us assume is 2.5 volts. So, 2.5 volts of the cell and then uh, I can connect a galvanometer, okay. galvanometer G and the other end of the galvanometer is connected to what we call as the uh, jockey, this other end touching at point P is the jockey. Right. So, this is my bag of mango here. Right. So, now I want to measure this 2.5 and uh, because my k value we know that it was 6 volts and 6 meters so it was 1 volt per meter. So, if I have on 1 meter of wire if I have 1 volts and if I want 2.5 volts then I will need 2.5 meters of the wire. So, 1, 2.5 meters of the wire right 2.5 meters of the wire. So, now I can say that I on one side I have instead of 2.5 kg and 2.5 kg I can say 2.5 volts and 2.5 volts. But what is the proof that they have become equal? I mean you know this is 2.5 this is 2.5 but how will I come to know that what I have measured is right the EMF of the cell that we will realize when this galvanometer gives us a zero reading and hence this point P is what is called as the balancing length right this, this word again we can compare it with our weighing scale right in a weighing scale also we are trying to balance the two sides right the masses on the two sides and how do we come to know that the weighing scale the, the we have reached right the mass uh, when we should take the reading right for example if I put 5 kgs here and if I just put 1 kg here then this side the right hand side will go down. So, will I take a reading and say okay my bag of mango is 1 kg? No, right the, the seller vegetable or fruit seller what he will do is he will keep on adding masses here 2 kilo, 3 kilo, 4 kilo and then how does he come to know that okay now is the time to take a reading. He will see this uh, the beam that is why we also call it as a beam balance or sometimes there you can see there is a pointer right when he sees it is at the pointer is at the center or when he sees that the beam is balanced exactly horizontal right neither tilting to the left or the right it is horizontal that is when he will take a reading he will add up all the masses and say okay now this is the final mass same logic here I start with my bag of mangoes which is E1 which is let us say 2.5 volts then using this jockey I can tap the jockey at different different points on the wire there will be one point P where I will see that the galvanometer is showing me 0 volts, a 0 ampere reading. Right? So, once the galvanometer shows 0, 
that is what we call as the balancing length now the voltages have become equal now i will take the reading of the length what reading we are taking here we were taking a reading of mass here we will take a reading of the length so once i get the length right all i can do is i can say this e1 the voltage e1 the emf which i am trying to measure this voltage is nothing but the voltage on the wire from point a not to b but to point p vap but the working principle of a potentiometer is that v is equal to k times l so i can call it as k times l1 because i am trying to measure the emf of the cell e1 i can call the balancing length as l1 or in other words e1 has become equal to k l1 and this is the way we can measure the emf of a cell using this device called as the potentiometer but just a small note here uh, which will lead us to the first experiment of potentiometer and uh, that is if i want to measure even because in reality these numbers which i took right they were just assumption i don't know in reality what is even if i knew what was even what was the need for a potentiometer right so and again uh, we will not know what is the resistance of the wire and uh, how much you know is the voltage across the rheostat or any other external resistor and how much is the loss within the cell so i don't know these numbers right 2 2 4 volt 6 volts and you know 2.5 volts these numbers are not known so i can just say all i can really measure here is the length even is kl1 so if e1 is unknown and l1 is known if i want to find out e1 i need to know the value of k and if i want to find out the value of k i will have to go through the hassle of finding out the loss finding out the rheostat resistance finding out the resistance of the wire then plugging all the numbers into the formula for k which is e rab upon rab plus small r plus rh into lab right so we will have to put all the numbers in there and uh, find out uh, the value of k put the value of k and then get the value of e1 so it will become slightly uh, you know troublesome to do all that so what we can do instead is right a slight modification will lead us to the first experiment which is called as individual cell method so the first step here was e1 is vap and vap is nothing but kl1 let's call this as equation number 1 now what we can do is i don't want to find the value of k so can i still find out the value of e1 yes i can let's take another cell e2 remove this cell e1 and put another cell of some other emf and let's call it as e2 but this time i will use a cell whose emf is known to me it's not a unknown value right so i can just buy one cell from the shop a brand new cell and make sure it's uh, within the expiry date right and then uh, the whatever is the voltage printed on the label of the cell we can be pretty sure that you know that's what the emf would be so say i buy a dual cell and it is say 1.5 volts right so now my e2 value is not unknown i know the value of e2 still i will balance it out over the wire okay i'll put it uh, in the circuit and i'll find out uh, a point it may be some other point p dash maybe right it may not be the same point p it may be some point p dash in fact that p dash would not be here if i want to show it more accurately right if i am saying e2 is 1.5 then that p dash would be somewhere uh, here if this is 2.5 then it should be here at 1.5 right 1 meter less so this is where p dash would be so then uh, let the length from a to p dash uh, let it be some l2 because it's my cell number 2 so hence the name of this experiment is called as individual cell method right one cell at a time first connect e1 then connect e2 one at a time and then very simple just divide both of them divide equation 1 by 2 the potential gradient k gets cancelled off and i get e1 by e2 is equal to l1 by l2 i know the value of l1 from the experiment i can measure it on the scale i know the value of l2 i know the value of e2 so there is only one unknown here and that is e1 so one unknown and one equation we can solve this and get the value of the unknown emf e1 right so this is the 
working principle of a potentiometer and it also includes the first experiment that is the individual cell method.